Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread and Scripture Song broadcast for this 18th day of May. It is Saturday, and we are into another weekend. And today's topic is titled, Bless the Lord, O My Soul. And I thought there was a hymn to this uh, um, here, but uh, I must have been thinking of something else. But anyway, um, so we'll go ahead and get into that um, here in a few minutes. But first, I'd like to greet you, as always, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which has taken away the sin of the world. And he, too, can be your Lord and Savior today, if he's not already. And he wants to be, as the Bible says, as God says in his holy word, that he is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. You've got to repent, turn from what you're believing in and trusting in, and turn to God and trust Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, who came down to this earth and died for our sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to scripture and once you do that the holy spirit comes and dwells inside of you and he will guide you and direct you as you um allow him to and you got to realize that there's more to salvation than just getting saved from uh, perishing in your sin and ending up in a, a devil's hell then you got to learn to live for the lord and let him uh, teach you and guide you and get into a good bible believing church and Get under good preaching and teaching of God's word and all that. So that all comes with it. And to follow the Lord and to have a good relationship with the Lord. Because that's the most important relationship you can ever have is with uh, Jesus and uh, God the Father and the Holy Spirit. So and uh, grow and learn and all that. So that's uh, why I do these broadcasts. So we can get edified and hopefully pray that that would help you somehow in these Baptist bread devotionals and daily strength devotionals and all that. So. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into the scripture song for today. And today is the 18th, and Psalm 19, 1 through 3 is the scripture song verses. So let's go ahead and look at um, this particular psalm here and see who wrote it. And then we'll read it if it's not too lengthy. So here we go. This is Psalm 19. And if you have your Bible, you're welcome to turn along and follow along with me. So here we go. So there's uh, 14 verses to Psalm uh, 19. And it says here to the chief musician, a psalm of David. And the first three verses, like I said before, are uh, the scripture song verses. And so we'll read those and then read the entire uh, chapter here, all 14 verses, and then get into the scripture song uh, with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. So here we go. It says here in verse 1, The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. So, picture of Jesus coming for us, and uh, that's verse 5, and then verse 6 says, His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of, of it. And there is nothing hid from the uh, heat thereof. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright, and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh, praise the Lord. Good psalm there. And... Now let's go ahead and put that aside and sing the scripture song verses here from Psalm 19, verses 1 through 3, with Brother Dean and Sister Patty here on the 
CD. So here we go. Psalms 19, 1 through 3. The heavens declare right. the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Alright, let's hear it sing out. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Day unto day, Utter a speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. Showeth His handiwork. Praise the Lord for that. All right, so we'll put that back to yesterday's scripture song, and we'll do those again towards the end of the broadcast. Now it's time to get into today's topic for Saturday, May 18th, 2024, titled, Bless the Lord, O My Soul. And Psalm 103, verse 1, is the scripture, or the, the um, psalm for um, the uh, topic today. And so let's go ahead and look at Psalm 103 in its entirety really quick. Let's look at this psalm and see who wrote this one before we get into the topic here. So Psalm 103. And see here. Alright, so Psalm 103. And it's got 22 verses. So we might as well read this one really quick. Another psalm here. Good to open up the Bible and read God's Word. So this is another psalm of David. Psalm 103. And it says here again in verse 1, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like in the eagles. The Lord ex executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. So, hallelujah for that. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. He had not dealt with us after our sins, praise the Lord, not reward, nor reward us uh, according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are gra as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourisheth. Uh, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto children's children to such as keep his covenant, and to those that remember his commandments to do them. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom ruleth over all. 
Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, ye ministers of his, that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So that's the entirety of Psalm 103. So praise the Lord for that and his mercy and graciousness and all that. So now let's get into the topic here. Again, titled, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, for this 18th day of May, Saturday. And again, uh, Psalm 103, 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And today's author is R.K. That would be the initials for R.K. That would be Randy Cruz, pastor of Lighthouse Baptist Church in Stanwood, I.A. So let me read you what he wrote here, this short little topic that he wrote. He says here, writes here, Bless the Lord, O my soul, because he is almighty, beloved, comforter, deliverer, eternal, father, great, holy, incredible, just, king, lord, mighty, nice, one and only, perfect, quality, redeemer, savior, trustworthy, unchangeable, Valuable, worthy, extra beneficent, yours, zealous. So that's just some of the things he is. And then he writes down here, I know you can come up with your own alphabet praise list, so go ahead. So you can go ahead and do your own alphabet praise list of um, who the Lord is. So he says, go ahead and do that. It says, tell God how great he is. That's right, because he is great. And... He says, yes, he is thrice great. <laughs> Hallelujah. See 1 Chronicles 16, 25, Psalm 48, 1, and uh, 145, 3. So let's look at uh, those really quick here. So 1 Chronicles 16, 25, and 1 Chronicles 16. All right, so 1 Chronicles 16. And we get some context here with these verses here. So let's see, we won't read the entire chapter here, but um, First Chronicles 16, and what was this one, uh, 25? So let's see here. Let's see how far back we need to go here and get some context. So, all right, so um, this uh, verse 1 uh, it says here, So they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David had pitched for it, and they offered burnt uh, sacrifices and peace offerings before God. So they brought the ark back and um, put it in this... Uh, so they brought this, the ark of God and put it in this tent and uh, and offered burnt offerings and sacri uh, peace offerings for it. Um, or burnt, uh, yeah, burnt sacrifices and peace offerings, and then uh, David um, had made an end of offering the burnt offerings and the peace offerings. He blessed the people in the name of the Lord, and so on and so forth. And then, and then in verse four it says that he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and uh, to record and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel, and all that. And then verse seven uh, continues on. It says then on. That day David delivered first uh, this uh, psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. And it says in verse 8, Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works, give gl ye gl uh, uh, glory, excuse me, glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually, remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God, his judgments are in all the earth. Be mindful always of his covenant the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham 
and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. And let's see here, what was the passage here? It was 25. And then it goes on down here and continues on down. So we'll skip down um, to uh, 23. It says, um, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Shew forth from day to day his salvation. Declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. And then verse 25, which is the verse that he mentions to look at in the topic here. And it says, For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared among, or excuse me, above all gods. And then it says, For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens and so on and so forth. And so you can read the rest of that on your own time. There's 43 verses here to this. Um, first Chronicles um, chapter 16. So that's the first one there. So you get a little context there with that. So that was the first one. So he said, see First Chronicles 16, 25, which we read some extra verses there. And then Psalm 48, 1 is the next one here. So let's go to Psalm 48 and look at this. Here, Psalm 48, and look at this scripture here, Psalm 48, and this is uh, verse 1. So this is a song and psalm for the sons of Korah, and verse 1 says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. And we'll read the rest of the chapter here, because there's only 14 verses. It says, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north of the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. For uh, fear took hold upon them uh, there and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind, as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever, Selah. Uh, we have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy great hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Mark ye well her bulwarks. Consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even until unto death. So praise the Lord for that. So that's the entirety of Psalm 48, including the verse that he mentioned to read. And so that was Psalm 48.1 and then Psalm 145.3. So let's go to that one. Psalm 145 and verse 3. And so we won't read the entirety of this one. Um, but Psalm 145, this is David's Psalm of Praise. And so I'll read a little bit of this. Um, here it says, I will extol... Thee my God, O King, and I will bless thy name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Praise the Lord, and then so on and so forth. So I encourage you to read all that on your own time. So that was the first three verses there. Psalm 145, and the Lord is great. So praise God for that, that his greatness. All right, so continuing on, uh, it says, um, They all three say great, or great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. Yes, I would say Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are great, and ought to be praised and worshipped, right? So all three. Now isn't that interesting? Our triune God and his greatness and praiseworthiness mentioned three times in Scripture. What a book. That's right. Bible is quite a book it's a living book so and that's why we need to get into it and read it and study it and make sure we get it rooted in deep into our hearts and minds and souls 
So, amen. Good little topic there. Um, about how we are to bless the Lord and all that. So, amen. Okay, so that's that uh, there. And now let's go ahead and grab the Daily Strength Volume 2 book by Douglas D. Stoffer and Andrew B. Ray. And we are concluding on this first week of the topic on flattery. And this is week 15. And then next week we go into the second week on flattery. So today is day 105, Saturday. And it's titled Flattering Titles. And we have here Job 32, verses 21 and 22. And let's see here who uh, who is talking here. I think this is Job speaking here. So let's look at this really quick. And see here, so Job uh, 32, and let's see, so, alright, so sir, um, 32 is uh, talking about how um, the, uh, the three, his three friends um, had ceased to answer Job, so it says here, so uh, these three men ceased to answer Job because he was righteous in his own eyes, and so on and so forth, and that's um, uh, Elihu, the son of uh, Berachiel, Bar the Buzzite of the kindred of uh, Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled uh, because he justified himself rather than God, and so on and so forth. So, and so let's go ahead and um, that's that there. And so I encourage you to read um, the book of Job in its entirety to get um, all of what's going on here. You really got to read the whole entire book of Job to get the whole entirety of uh, these things. So, But we'll read um, here verses 21 and 22 of Job 32. So this says here, Let me not, I pray you, accept any man's person, neither let me give flattering titles unto man. For I know not to give flattering titles. In so doing, my maker would soon take me away. So uh, that's the passages there. And introductory thoughts says, uh, the book of Job primarily focuses on the conversations between Job and his three friends, as I was just explaining there. Uh, the content of many of their speeches seems to lack the expected wisdom until a younger man named Elihu takes the opportunity to speak. So this must be him speaking there. His words were packed with wisdom. One of the areas he addressed concerned giving flattering uh, titles to men. Elihu declared that it was sinful to give men flattering titles and that he knew better than to do so. So flattering titles would be something like reverend or, or father or something like that because you're not supposed to call any man reverend or father because God's God the Father in heaven and only God's to be reverenced. So amen. So not to give flattering names to men. And it says, keep here or keep in mind that flattery is based upon deceit and is never favorable. By refusing to give flattering titles to men, Elihu chose not to say anything concerning others, simply to gain an advantage for himself. Uh, Elihu knew that God would bring this type of flattery into judgment. So, all right. So that's the introductory thoughts. Now for devotional thoughts. Um, for children, and of course you can apply this to adults also. It says here the people of Lystra called Paul and Barnabas gods because Paul had healed a crippled man. Read how Paul and Barnabas reacted to that flattery in Acts 14, 14 through 15. So let's look at that here and see how they responded there to this. So Acts 14 and see this account here. So Acts 14, and see how Paul and Barnabas act, uh, responded to this, acted to this. So 14, and what was it? 15, uh, 14 through 15. So, all right, so these are the men that were calling them uh, gods. And so let's go up here a little bit. Um, verse 12, I will start here. It says, and they called Barnabas Jupiter, and Paul Mer Mercury. Mercurius, uh, because he was the chief speaker. Then the priests of Jupiter, which was before their city, brought oxen and garlands unto the gates, and would have done sacrifice with the people, which when the apostles Barnabas and Paul heard of, they rent their clothes, and ran in among the people, crying out, and saying, Sirs, 
Why do ye these things? We also are men of like passions with you, and preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth, and the sea, and all things that are therein, who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own ways. Nevertheless he left not himself without witness, in that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness, and with these sayings scarce restrained they the people that they had not done sacrifice unto them, and so on and so forth. So, I continue to read that on your own time, but that's what they did, that's how they responded there, and Acts chapter 14, so let's see, so continuing on here in the devotional thoughts, so uh, that's how they acted to uh, to that flattery, in Acts 14, 14 through 15, it says here on the other hand, read how wicked King Herod allowed the people to call him a god, what happened to him, in Acts 12, 21 through 23, so let's look at that account there and see what happened to Herod here, and so Acts 12, Go back here, and uh, what was it, 21 through 23? So this is um, here, uh, Acts 12, 20, so 21. So this is what happened to Herod. So we'll go back up to verse 20. It says, And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon, but they came with one accord to him, and um, having made Blastius, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a god and not of a man. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. So that's what happened to him, um, because he wouldn't give God the glory, and he tried to lift himself up as God. So that's what happened to Herod there. So got eaten by eaten by worms, and gave up the ghost. All right, so that was for children, and now for everyone. It says here, what are some flattering titles that men bestow upon others? So that's the question there. And it says, additionally, what are some flattering titles given by men to men in religious circles, i.e. Reverend, Psalm 111, 9, and Father, Matthew 23, 9. So, those are the questions there. And then, um, next, next it says here, why should we refuse to use flattering titles to address men? What are some of the things that can happen by refusing to express this type of flattery? How are others harmed by recognizing them with such flattering titles. Hmm. So let's be careful of that, not to give flattering titles to men. And then on the prayer thoughts, it says, Ask the Lord to show you the danger of flattering titles, and then ask God to give you the you wisdom to avoid flattery. And then the hymn from the book is titled Fool, Fools Make a Mock at Sin, but there is no hymn for that one. So I picked a different one for today. That's the second hymn. So We'll do those hymns here in a few minutes, but first let's do the quotes from the next volume. Volume 3, Week 15, Subject is Heresy. And we have four quotes here. So the first quote on heresy, it says, The world is chock full of ideas, theories, and teachings, yet each of us must diligently separate the truth from error. Right? So, separate the truth from error. The more time an individual spends in his Bible the more grounded in truth he becomes. That's right. Uh, false doctrines may be presented by men, but the ultimate plan of deception is crafted by the devil himself. And then the final quote here says, As the world, the flesh, and the devil war against the truth, and those who propagate the truth, believers must determine to hold fast. So let's hold fast, watch and pray and all that. So that is the end of... The quotes from the next volume on heresy for volume 3, week 15. And then tomorrow we'll get into all the introductory stuff for week 16, which is flattery continued. The second week on flattery, all that stuff there. And we'll go over that here in a little bit. 
And I'll put that aside there and we'll grab the hymn book and do these hymns. So the first hymn, uh, I could not find an instrumental for it, so I'll just read you the stanzas here. And then we'll go on to the second hymn, which I picked for today, which is titled Look and Live. And this first one is uh, titled Here Am I. And this is one of these Submission of the hit, uh, Saint Hymns, a spiritual song written by Annie S. Hawks, another one of her hymns that she wrote, 1835 to 1918 is when she lived. And then Robert Lowry again, 1826 to 1899. No story for this one, so I'll read you all five of these stanzas, and then I'll give you the references, and then move on to the second hymn. So stanza one says, Hark, the voice of Jesus calling, calling from on high, while you join the answering chorus, Jesus, here am I. Stanza two, now it swells o'er earth and ocean, swelleth ever hot uh, nigh, uh, hear it from the cross, uplifted, answer, here am I. Stanza three, should the still small voice re Heed it, while well, you heed the cry. Do not spurn the tender message. Answer, here am I. Stanza four. Wait not till, with hasty summons, death is passing by, till you must with fear and trembling. Answer, here am I. Stanza five. Millions who have answered Jesus praise him from the sky. Millions more are waiting, waiting. Answer. Here am I. And then the refrain says, Here am I, O blessed Savior. Own and keep me thine forever. Thine through blood and interceding. Precious Jesus, here am I. So that's the hymn there. And now the references. Stanza 1, we have Hebrews 3, 1 and Romans 10, 13. Stanza 2 is Colossians 1, 5 through 6 and Psalm 55, 16. Stanza 3 is 1 Kings 19.12 and 1 Samuel 3.4. Stanza 5, uh, 4 is Hebrews 9.27 and Ecclesiastes 8.8. 8. And then stanza 5 is Revelation 5, 9 through 10 and Hebrews 12.25. And then for the refrain we have John 6.37 and Colossians 1.14. So that's the end of the first hymn there. And now let's go back here to the second hymn, we're going to go back towards the front of the book a little bit. Here, put this to tomorrow's hymn. And the second hymn that I picked is titled Look and Live. And this is hymn 341 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. An Invitation to Salvation, a spiritual song written by William A. Ogden, O-G-D-E-N. And he's the only one uh, that's mentioned here. And he lived from 1841 to 1897, and uh, we used to sing this hymn on the uh, out on the street um, on Friday afternoons in downtown Deland, and we'd see uh, it was like me and brother Kyle and brother Ed and a few others, and we'd see how um, how loud each one of us would get when we do the look and live part. <laughs> that was always fun. So uh, we'll go ahead and sing the hymn here now. So here we go, look and live. And uh, no story for this one, so there we go. I have a message from the Lord, hallelujah. The message unto you I'll give. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. It's recorded in the word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. I have a message full of love, hallelujah. A message, oh my friend, for you. Is a message from above, hallelujah. Jesus said it and I know tis true. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look 
can live. Life is offered unto thee, hallelujah, eternal life thy soul shall have. If you'll only look to him, hallelujah, look to Jesus who alone can save. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah, it is only that you look and live. I will tell you how I came, hallelujah, to Jesus when he made me whole. Was believing on his name, hallelujah, I trusted and he saved my soul. Look and live, my brother, live, look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah, it is only that you look and live. Look and live, my brother, live. Look to Jesus now and live. Tis recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Praise the Lord. Look at him there. So now the references. No story like I said before. And here we go. Stanza 1. We have Second Corinthians 5.18. And Numbers 21.9. Stanza 2, we have 2 Corinthians 5, 14, and then John 3, 14 through 15, and then stanza 3, we have John 3, 16, Isaiah 45, 22, and Hebrews 7, 25, and then stanza 4, we have Acts 26, 1 through 23, 1 Peter 2, 24, and Ephesians 1, 13, and then for the refrain, we have John 3, 36, so, amen. And so that's the hymn there for that uh, one. And then we'll put this back to tomorrow's hymn. And we'll put that aside for right now and do the scripture songs one more time. And then we'll wrap it up for today. So, all right. So we're going to turn the power back on. As we <clears throat> went a little long there. But uh, got to get the scripture and get some understanding of what's being said and written while we're reading these devotions so amen all right so let's do this here yesterday's and today's again with brother dean and sister patty so we'll go down to the 17th yesterday and whoop. all right here we go so proverbs 12:28. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. That's right. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. There's no death, there's no death in the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof there's no death in the way of righteousness is life. And in the pathway thereof there's no death, there's no death, there's no death. Now today's one more time. Psalms 19, 1 through 3. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Yeah. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. The heavens declare 
the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter a speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork. There is no speech, nor language where their voice is not heard. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth His handiwork, showeth His handiwork. So, that's right, and good scripture there, and uh, praise the Lord. So, that's it for today's broadcast, but before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song, and then the topics for the Baptist bread, and then the introductory stuff for um, next week on Flattery Continued, the second week on Flattery, and then um, the hymn for tomorrow. So tomorrow will be the 19th, and Isaiah 51, 11 is the passage, the scripture song verse, and it says here, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy shall be upon their head, they shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and mourning shall flee away. So that's tomorrow's scripture song verse, and we'll go through the entirety of Isaiah 51 to get some context here, and rightly divide the word. So all that, so that's tomorrow's um, scripture song there. And then the topic for tomorrow, Sunday, the 19th, starting a new week, is titled, Love at Home and Abroad. And First Thessalonians three twelve through thirteen is the passage, and tomorrow's author is H N. That would be the initials for H N. That would be uh, Herb Noe, and he is deceased from Livonia, Michigan. So he's the author tomorrow. So that's um, that one, and then the daily strength. Let's uh, open this up and go through this here really quick. So. Tomorrow is starting week 16, which is the second week on flattery. Flattery continued, and we'll go over all the introductory stuff here, how it's found, um, variations on it, last usage in the Old Testament, interesting fact, Bible study tip, and then we'll go through the week. And then tomorrow is dirt, uh, day um, 106, church day, Isaiah 30, verse 9 and 10. So we'll go over that uh, there tomorrow. And... Of course, we finished up the uh, More Fight on Stories book uh, about a week or so ago. And so we won't be adding anything else for the time being, just doing the devotionals and the hymn singing and stuff. So uh, nothing added for right now. But um, so we'll do uh, the hymn now. is the going to be titled for tomorrow, Nothing Between. And this is hymn 746 in the Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs book. And this is going to be uh, starting on this uh, new series of uh, hymns, uh, these uh, particular ones here, the Resolve of the Saints. So this will be the first one of these series of hymns, uh, the Resolve of the Saints, uh, Nothing Between, written by Charles A. Tindley, and then arranged by F.A. Clark. And there is a story for this one, so praise the Lord, that will be tomorrow's hymn, and might have... Uh, pick a uh, second one to sing, so we'll see what happens. But that's uh, the one hymn for tomorrow. And then this is the cover of the hymn book. There's three different colors to this hymn book. There's this uh, dark blue one, there's a brown one, and then there's a lighter blue grayish um, color there. And then there's also the leather bound edition. I believe that's still available. I'm not sure I haven't been to the website in a while, so that one. And then you got the um, spinal edition there, which is uh, this type of... Uh, side backing there and it replaces uh you know the other one there so you can choose whichever one you prefer you can get one of both both so that's uh, uh the different uh versions of the hymn book they have and then um 
There's that on the website, which I'll give you here in a few minutes. There's that, and then the Daily Strength Volume 2 book, and there's four volumes to this series of devotional books, and these can all be found on MelodyPublications.com. Is the website there. So that's that, and then the Scripture Song book and CDs, you should be able to get them online at www.DailyScriptureSongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, and pray for them. They are here in Florida right now. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to go back full-time to do ministry or mission work over there in Guyana, but um, uh, they'll probably be back and forth. Uh, Brother Dean's having a lot of pain and stuff, and so pray for him, and you can read all that in the latest prayer letter there they put out um, about a couple weeks ago. So check that out, and then um, the website there. And again, that's www.DailyScriptureSongs.com, and that's their website, Missionary Support Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for that mission work to continue as brothers and sisters in Christ that live there locally have taken over for the time being. And I think uh, Sister Patty is going back in July for a month to uh, do help with VBS over there and some other things that she needs to get done. So pray pray for them uh, in that mission work there. And um, so that's that information. And then the Baptist Bread devotional book. This is the cover for... Uh, this month and next month, so if you order now, you'll most likely get the one for July and August, and that comes in a box of 10, twelve ninety five. Every, every other month, you'll get a box of these, and the uh, website is baptistbread.com, or you can go to www.timgreenministries.org. It's the second website, and that has other books available to order if you check out that website there. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we need to be getting into and reading it and studying it and get it rooted deep into our hearts and minds and souls and and uh, get grounded in God's Word and stand strong and watch and pray and all that and seek God's face and ask Him to help you and guide you and direct you in all truth as you live for Him and grow in uh, the faith and all that and to have a better relationship with both God the Father and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So as we are reading a little bit and the baptist spread today so um need to have a relationship with all three of them uh, the trinity so amen all right so that's the king james bible there and then also the other broadcast i do where i've been reading uh through brother james's book on genesis part of the christ honoring commentary series and it's a devotional type of commentary um and when it gets reprinted it'll be a chapter by chapter verse by verse commentary so uh, you might be able to still get that um somewhere um Perhaps contact the church to find out how to get a copy of the older version or maybe find a used one somewhere. Um, but that's um, available, all his books, the ones that are still in print that I know of. That um, That's uh, www.jameswnox.org or go to the store part of the website, which is store.jameswnox.org and look up all his books and other materials there and sermons and all that. So, And then the YouTube channel, if you want to watch the video versions of uh, his uh, sermons and sermons by other men that uh, teach and preach God's word when Brother James is away and during the Sunday school hours. Uh, that's um, James Knox Sermons YouTube channel. So that's the church um, YouTube channel there. And then if you know somebody that doesn't have Facebook or you'd rather watch uh, the broadcast on YouTube, that YouTube channel is Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting or typing in Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting these up and all that so that'll be about it for today so thanks for watching and appreciate your prayers and support of these uh, videos and stuff and uh, hope that they're edifying and helpful to you in some way and uh, praise the lord for all these different men that write these devotionals and brother dean and sister patty and brother stauffer and brother ray who did the daily strength uh, books and then all the hymn writers throughout the ages so praise the lord for all them and uh Let's continue to get God's word out there and keep telling people about Jesus. And if you're not saved, well, today is the day to get saved. So I hope you do that today. And um, amen. All right. Well, see you all, Lord willing, next time. Bye-bye for now.